What was your first impression of Whip when you first kind of met him through the script? Well, I mean, first, I, well, I didn't stop on those first pages. I kept going. I mean, right away it was very interesting and different, but... Um, You know, when I read the screenplay, as soon as I finished it, I called my agent. I said, I'm going to do it. I want to do it. You know, and uh, I think you have to set up the, the character like that. A man who's, who's a womanizer and, and a drinker and a drug addict who, by the time he's about to confess, he asks for God's help. You know, I think that's the journey he takes. So I found that fascinating. Mm -hmm. What brought you to this project? Why did you want to do especially this unique life? Well, you know, when I read the screenplay, um, it was so unique and it was so different and so uh, bold. And uh, I loved the character that Denzel plays. Um, and I didn't know what the ending was going to be. I was very intrigued by it. I had to keep reading it. And, and when that happens, it's a very good sign. And it's so rare when that happens. So I immediately decided that this is something that I wanted to do. From your point of view, what makes them the perfect whip for your movie? Well, you know, obviously Denzel is an incredibly tal talented actor. He also brings a real sense of gravitas to the roles he plays. He has charm. You know, he has swagger. People like to look at him on screen. Um, so all that he brings to a role was perfect for the part of whip. It's a long, long way before he really admits that he's got a problem, that he's, mm. he's, um, he's in need of help. Mm. Um, do you think what makes him in the end really stop talking, telling lies? What, what is it? Well, I, you know, for me, when I was playing the part, I just seeing that girl's face, you know, the, uh, that you see him with in the beginning, it's like, are you going to lie on the dead now? Are you, I think that if... If he did lie, well, you never know, but I, I think that if he did lie, I'm, I may not have done the part. You know, it, it, there's no way to go. He has to finally, like he says, he can't, he doesn't have any more lies to tell. He didn't have one more lie. He had nowhere else to go. What I really was fascinating for me because of a kind of background knowledge about it, that there are these tiny little moves uh, that alcoholic people does. And then you you do in in the movie the tiny gestures like uh, this fresh air spray. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 stuff. Did you research on that or was it just in the script? Uh, I don't remember with the spray if I asked for that or if it was in the script. I forgot, uh, but I'll take credit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's this is these tiny little moves which you know mm. you make absolutely believe that mm. this is a man who is crazy into alcohol, but mm. he doesn't realize it. He still right. pretends for alcohol. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You know, the people have asked me, what did, did, did you study about addiction? I said, no, because he doesn't think he's addicted. Yeah. You know, he's in denial. The writer uh, uh, had an addiction issue for many years. He's been sober, I think, 15 years. And he also has a fear of flying. So there are many truths that were in the script based on his own... Uh, his own experiences. I, and maybe he, he put that in there. I don't remember if he wrote it in there or if I just asked the prop man to give me some spray. Yeah. Um, it's maybe But we've all done that, <laughs> you know, like when you're young and you got to go home. Yes. <laughs> you know, we've all done that to, to some that, degree. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you, uh, do you think that if Whip would have been sober, he still could fly the plane like this? That's a good question. Ten, ten other pilots who were sober try it and crash and kill everyone, I mean, in the simulation. So we, Bob Zemeckis and I talked about that. Maybe the fact that he was relaxed uh, helped. Yeah. Good question. It's an intriguing question. Whether he could land the plane or not if he were sober, there's, it's possible that he couldn't. It's possible that many of those people lived because he was, uh, was intoxicated. I really like is also the music in the film. Like for the first time when we see John Goodman for the first time, there is sympathy for the devil. Right. <laughs> It's just really, really cool. How conscious was this decision to really put the songs on a certain place? Oh yeah, no, that was those were conscious decisions. You know, you 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 start putting the film together and you start trying different pieces of music to see if they work. And I always thought that uh, 
you know, the Rolling Stones just felt like the right type of music for the John Goodman character. 